Okay, so I'll kind of get started here now. So, if you saw earlier um, in the week when the recipe was posted, tonight's going to be Mexican night. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some chicken fajitas. And to go along with that, we're going to have some guacamole and pico de gallo, which is like a chunky tomato and oniony salsa. Pico de gallo translates to pico de rooster. I'm not sure why they call it that, but that's what it's called. All right. So feel free to ask any questions as we go along, and um, I will try to do my best to answer them. All right. So if we saw in the recipe, I'm not sure if you looked at it or not, we're going to be doing this uh, chicken fajitas, and we're going to be using a fajita kit, just because I want to show you what you can do easily at home um, with some uh, store-bought items. So it's just your standard, you know, old El Paso salsa kit, um, seasoning and tortillas. Um, but then we're also going to use some fresh tomatoes, some onions, some peppers uh, to make some pico de gallo with some lime juice and coriander. And then we're also going to make um, some fresh guacamole, okay? So, let me just get the ingredients organized here. And we're going to do a little bit of knife skills for you just to show you how I like to cut um, some of these things, the peppers and the tomatoes and things like that. And then I will show you how we cook some of it. So what we're going to do first, just get over to my little timetable here, is uh, the chicken breast. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that marinate um, with the seasoning that comes with um, the uh, fajita kit. So I'm just going to grab the fridge these chicken breasts and then just chop them good and, this. and then I'm going to move the camera angle so you can see the chopping board hopefully this will be all right all right so we've got our chicken breast here so what we're going to do is we're just going to slice that in thin slices and then we're going to let that sit with the seasoning pack. So I took this off a of full chicken earlier. We're just going to give it some nice slices kind of at an angle. Just like this, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact. Put that in there, there's the tenderloin that came off. kind of at an angle now, so they're relatively uniform pieces. All right. Put that in there. We'll get rid of our raw. Now I'm going to take the chicken. I'm going to take half of that seasoning mix. And I'm going to save the other half for the, um, the onions and peppers. So I'm just going to let this kind of marinate. So half of that. And some seasoning. Touch of oil. So we're just going to let this sit off to the side until we're ready to cook. Just give it a chance to kind of marinate a bit, get those flavors in there. Now depending on what kind of um, fajita kit that you bought, it might be a little bit spicier, it might be a little bit red. I think this was a mild one because um, you never know what you're going to get when you do Morrison's online shopping. Alright, so what we're going to start with now is the pico de gallo. So while that is soaking, we're going to start with some of the prep for the pico de gallo. So I've already chopped some of the tomatoes beforehand because I'm sure you didn't want to sit me, uh, watch me chop tomatoes for 10 minutes. So there's some of them there. But I still will show you how to do some. All right. There's some tomatoes there. Got 
Okay, so there's a million different ways that you can chop a tomato. I'm just going to show you how I like to do it. You grab a little bowl for the rubbish. All right, so I'm just going to take the butt off here so it can stand flat. Butt off. And then we don't want any of the seeds or the insides in the pig of the guile. So I'm going to let it sit like that. And then I'm going to cut around the tomato like this. I'm going to try to get that skin off, leaving the center of the tomato. So I'm going to cut kind of around and get the meat off. But that's leaving the seeds inside. So if you look. All these seeds are inside of there, and none of the seeds are on the meat. So we're going to be able to take those pieces and dice them up nice. Get rid of the seeds, because you don't want the seeds inside the pico. You might get a little bit of the seeds along with it. Um, don't worry, you can just kind of uh, use your finger. See if there's a little bit in there, I can kind of use my finger and push it out. Again, kind of out and around. All right. I got a little bit of seeds in that one, so I'm just going to push those out. And then I'm going to grab my cloth and give it a wipe because I like to work on a clean chopping board. And if you're chopping and you hit a tomato seed, that can uh, be a little bit um, Dangerous. All right, so I'm gonna let it sit it down like that. Give it some slice. Like that. Nicely diced, just like that. We'll do the skin side up. If you chop it with the skin side down, um, it's hard to chop all the way through. And if you're having trouble with this, it's probably because your knife isn't sharp enough, because um, dicing up tomatoes takes a pretty sharp knife. They don't have to be perfect, because it's just for us, so I'm not too worried about that. I did some of these ahead of time because I'm sure that um, watching me do this for 10 minutes isn't the most fun thing. Nicely diced tomatoes. Um, I'm not going to say tomatoes because I sound ridiculous if I say tomatoes. You can see none of the seeds in there. Now this is about um, 12 salad tomatoes. So if you look here, nicely diced. Yeah. Right. And again, I've already diced up some of the onions and things and the peppers, so I just wanted to add a bit to it. So we're going to dice up a nice uh, red onion here. So we'll take the top off. We're going to leave the root for when we dice. Cut it in half like that. And then we're going to peel the skin off. So 
So it's important that we leave the root on because the root's going to hold it together and make it easier for us to dice. If I was to take the root off, um, all the layers would separate, so it would make it a bit harder, make it a lot harder to dice very nicely. Alright, do this quick wipe. Alright, so I'm going to do two cuts horizontally. Alright, then I'm going to give it some really nice slices uh, vertically. Just going to just the edge of the root or where the root starts. And I'm going to hold it all together. Nice and finely chopped. If you look, I want them a little bit chunky, but that's nice and finely chopped. So add that to the pot. So once again, I've already done it that way. Get a few slices down this way. And a few nicely fine chops this way. Alright, and that's the onion there. That's the pot, and so what we're going to do next is we're going to put some peppers in there. So we'll grab our peppers. All right, so I'm going to do half of this is going to go in the um, onions and peppers for the fajitas, and half of it is going to go in the pig of the gallo. So I'm going to take the tops off there. So when I cut the tops off like that, they can sit on the chopping board nice and flat. I'm going to take my knife and kind of just cut the ends off. Kind of like that. That way all the seeds and stuff stay on the inside and then I can take the bottom off like that and use that. And this one. Now you may like to do these a different way. I'm not going to say that you're doing it wrong. This is just how um, I enjoy doing it. Um, I've chopped quite a few peppers in my life. And this is just the way that I find it easiest to do. Okay. So half of this we're going to do diced and half of it we're going to do sliced. So I'm going to take these. For the diced, I want it nice and flat. So I'm going to kind of just take some of it off just like that. And um, skin side up. I can hear a dog making noises. So if you look, nicely diced there into the pico. Take some of the green pepper here, slice through. Nicely diced red onions, some green, yellow, red peppers. Um, I added these peppers to it just because it's hard to get fresh jalapenos in this country for some reason. So you could add jalapenos to this um, to make it a little bit spicy. If you don't like spicy, you can just do it like that. You can't hear very well. All right, we'll talk a bit louder. All right, so just diced like that. So next, we're going to let these onions and peppers, or onions and peppers marinate in some of this lime juice before uh, we keep uh, moving on with it. So I'm going to take these limes, I'm going to set them down, and I'm kind of just going to roll them on the chopping board like this. 
So that's just kind of breaking up the inside a little bit because we want the juice out. So I'm just rolling it just to break it up. That way when we go to juice it, we'll get more juice out of it. All right, so these are feeling soft. So we're gonna cut these in half. And this is my little trick to do it. So I'm gonna grab a little sieve. Set this in here. And then I'm gonna take some kitchen tongs. And I use these to squeeze the limes like this. To get all those all that lime juice out. So I'm gonna kind of just move it around and squeeze with it with the kitchen tongs. Just like this. So that's the easiest way to uh, juice these limes, unless you have some sort of juicer or one of those things, but um, I don't own one of those because this works just fine. Alright. Lime juice is the most important thing in this dish. Lime is really, really what makes good pico de gallo a really good guacamole. So, let that sit. Yes, it is a great way to squeeze a lime. You don't need to buy something special for it. All right. So, I'm gonna give that a quick mix up. So I'm going to let the lime juice and the onions uh, just marinate a little bit while we finish off the rest of it. So that looks nice, doesn't it? There we go. So that will be part of our pico de gallo. And also a little bit of this will go into the guacamole as well. Alright, so what we're going to do next is slice some of the peppers and onions for the fajitas. So we're just doing, getting all of our slicing out of the way. So I've done a few of these ahead of time because I know that you probably don't want to watch me do it the whole time. So these are just some thinly sliced white onions and some uh, peppers. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll slice these peppers first. So that's the uh, rest of the peppers that I had that weren't diced. So just a nice slice through like this. Almost the same as before, so but we're not gonna slice through and dice it. Just nice julienne. To take those butt ends, slice those up so we're not wasting. All right. Don't worry if you didn't slice all the way through on each piece, so we can just kind of take it, kind of just break it up with our hands if they're not sliced all the way through, because some of those might just be a little bit stuck together. Not a problem. Just use your hands and break it up. The rest of those pieces in there. All right. Next, we're going to julienne this onion. So it's going to be similar to the way that we dice the white, uh, the red onion, but this is going to be sliced. So for this, we're going to take the top and the bottom off and cut it in half. And we'll get rid of the skin. Chopping board. Alright, so to get a nice julienne, what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of horizontally and then we're going to make our way vertically around. So, start off to the side, kind of going in at an angle. And as we go around, we're going to straighten out. And once we're halfway through, we can kind of flip it over on its side. 
and give it a few slices that way. Just like that. Okay. Kind of at an angle coming down. So imagine it as a semicircle, 180 degrees. So we're going to kind of move our knife around as we go around. Then we slice our onions here. So that's mixed in with the peppers, so that's going to be sauteed and that's going to be one of the toppings for the taquitos. There we go. So we're going to get all the chopping out of the way and then we'll start cooking everything. So those are the peppers and the onions. Now we're going to finish off with pico de gallo. So we've got the onions and uh, the peppers. We've got the tomatoes. I'm going to mix. I'm going to save a little touch of it out just in case I want to add more to the pico or to the guacamole. I'm going to give it a season here with some salt. some coriander. I'm not too fussed about leaving the stems in the coriander. If you've got some really big ones you can cut them out but it's really not a huge deal. Um, I know some of you probably don't like coriander. If Lorraine is watching this right now or sees this video she's probably gonna um, really hate this part. But I love coriander and I think this is what makes it really nice. There's any big bits. All right. All right. So this pico de gallo, it needs to sit for 10, 15 minutes before we use it. So the lime juice is going to start breaking down the tomatoes and also the um, salt is going to start breaking down and a lot of the liquid's going to come out. Um, I may add a little bit more lime juice to it if I think it needs it, but then we'll, we'll get there to if we need it. So we'll give it a nice mix and then we'll let it sit off to the side. And this is basically the paper de gallo. Now we're going to continue on with um, the guacamole. First I'm going to give this a quick clean. I'm sure that we've all uh, sorry, this back. Um, done some avocados before, but if not, don't worry, I'm going to show you how I do them. So make sure that if you go to the shop and you buy some avocados, make sure that they're a little bit squidgy. You don't want them to be rock hard because rock hard means that they're not ripe. So I want to have a bit of give when I push on these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife, put it in through the top until I hit the seed. Roll around. Boom. All right. So on the top, knife through the top. Roll around the knife. Boom. If your avocados aren't ripe, they're really not going to be nice for guacamole because they're just going to be too hard. Boom, like that, all right? So then we gotta get the seed out. So what we do is we take our knife, hold it in one hand, hit and twist. All right. Hold the seed out, 
hit, twist, and then what I do is I just hit my knife on the sink and let the uh, seed fall off because I'm not going to put my hand really close to here and try to get it off. Also, if your avocados aren't quite ripe and you try to do this, um, hit the seed out with a knife, it might stay in there and, and fall apart a bit. Here we go. Hit it, twist, come straight out. way to get the um, avocado out of the skin. I'll show you now. So I'm just going to hold it in my hand like this. And then I take a paring knife. I'm just going to run it kind of along here just like this. And I can kind of feel the edge of the paring knife uh, touch the skin. But I'm not going all the way through. So I'm just going the other direction, kind of giving it a dice like this so that when I scoop it out, it's already diced. Just like that. So again, I'm gonna hold it in my hand. Now I'm being very careful not to go through the back of the skin because my hand is there, but I can feel it as it's going along. And this just makes it easier to dice it up before you take it out because you make less mess. Just like this. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to end up mashing this up, but it just makes it easier. Slice through. And you're going to want to do this part quick because if the avocado stays out too long, it'll start to turn brown. Unless you want to put some lemon juice on it. So quickly, you're going to slice it like this. that way and all right so I'm gonna grab another bowl really quick right. so now we've got those nice and sliced up I've got another bowl and then we can take a large spoon and we're just gonna scoop out the avocado just like this and take the avocado here take a large spoon and I'm just gonna go to the skin and I'm just going to slide and scoop. You might have missed a little bit in there, so just go and finish and grab the rest of it. So just get between the meat and the skin here and just slide and scoop. And if you see, because we went ahead and we diced it all ahead of time, you can see that it's already going into um, a nice dice there. Slide and scoop. Through there and scoop. Now this isn't the only way to do avocados, this is just the way that I like to do it. Scoop. So if you look, we've already got all the avocado out of there, no mess, and now we can just mash it up. So you can take a fork and just kind of mush this up. I'm going to use this potato masher just because it's going to make it a little bit quicker. I'm just going to go through, take to mush all this together. We don't want it to be a complete paste. We want it to be a little bit chunky. So just a few passes through. So now we're going to take a bit of those onions and peppers from the peak of the guy that were left over and add those into there. And then we're just going to add a spoonful of the pico de gallo into the guacamole just to give some of those tomatoes and some of that flavor in the coriander. few more limes I'm going to put in here because I love limes. So again, I'll set it flat here, 
kind of roll it just so it kind of breaks apart the, uh, the the structure inside the lime so it just makes more juice come out also um, if you just took them straight out of the fridge you're not going to get as much juice out of them because um, a warm lime or a room temperature lime is going to give you more juice out so kind of just break it apart cut it in half Turn on the bowl, grab my tongs, just because I don't think that um, there's such a thing as too much lime juice, so I'm going to take my tongs again, squeeze the juice out, you can kind of start from the back and kind of work your way forward. And then you can kind of twist it if you feel like there's a little bit more juice that wants to come out. The key to really good guacamole is lime juice. There's never too much lime juice. And then also seasoning salts and coriander. I know if you don't like coriander, well, I feel sorry for you. All right. So the last bit of lime juice there. So now I'm going to add a little bit more coriander to that. Just because I love, love, love coriander. Coriander's in. I get a sip of salt. I give it a nice stir. And you can see nice and chunky uh, onions and peppers and tomatoes in there. Very, very nice consistency. And I, I love this guacamole. I try to make this every few weeks just because it's my favorite. Just like that. All right. Nice guacamole there. I'm not sure how good the camera is to show you this, but it looks amazing in person. All right. So that's the pico, and I think that's everything that I need to chop. You just look, yeah, that's everything. So I'm going to switch you back to the cooking camera, and then we're going to start again here in just a second. All right, so I'm just going to preheat this pan. Put it on low heat. Alright, so that chicken has been marinating a little bit with the spice packet and a bit of salt and pepper and a bit of oil, so I'm just going to let that roast in the oven. Put that at about 200. And then now we're just going to saute off these peppers. Just because um, when we're cooking the saute pan, we don't want to put too much food in the saute pan because if we put too much food in, it's going to drop the temperature of the pan down a lot. Um, and then it's just going to take longer to heat up. And also if you crowd and put too much food in the pan, it's going to start steaming instead of sauteing. So just making sure that that oil is nice and warm. I've got the chicken in the oven. I've got the pico de gallo and the guacamole off to the side ready to go. So this is usually the point where I start eating all the guacamole and the pico. And by the time I finish cooking the rest of the dish, uh, the guacamole and the pico is all gone. So hopefully that doesn't happen. 
comments. Just going to let that continue to heat up. Remember where I quit tidy. Give that pan just a second. Alright. So our pan's starting to smoke now, so we you know that it's about ready to go. Peppers and onions are in. So what we want to do with these onions and peppers is really let them cook down and caramelize. All right. So this is, is going to take a little bit. Watch a bit. We can kind of take our tongs, kind of break it up a bit, and I'm going to kind of let it spread out. I'm just going to open up the tortillas, tortillas in the salsa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of that seasoning packet that came with it and I'm going to add half of it to the chicken like I already did. And I'm going to add the other half to the onions and peppers. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the salsa sachet. So I'm going to add half of it to the chicken when it's almost done cooking. Let it kind of stew a little bit and I'm going to add the other half to the peppers and onions. So I think we had a few people uh, do the um, fried rice that we cooked last week. So thank you very much if you tried that fried rice. Um, I saw some pictures, they looked really nice. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy that some people gave that a shot. So basically from here on out, you can add pretty much anything that you want to use as a topping for your fajitas. Um, I like to do cheese. Um, I like to do some Mexican rice with it. Uh, I like to add the pico de gallo and the guacamole. Um, you can add anything you want. So basically, this is your time to where you can make it the way that you like it. Um, so, that these here. I like to do uh, a little packet of Mexican rice along with it because these are like a pound each and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, maybe in a separate video someday I can teach you how to make this, but in, um, just for ease sake and also because it tastes really nice and it's cheap, I like to use these packet rices so that's always something that I put along with it. Now when we're cooking these peppers, we don't want to mess around with it and shake it every two seconds. Um, there's a fine line between letting it sit and letting it burn or shaking it every two seconds. So if we shake it every two seconds, we're not going to get that nice color on it just because we're going to keep moving and it's going to lose temperature. So basically once every minute or two, I'll give it a nice shake. Um, if you mess around with it, it's not going to cook right. Take a look at our chicken. See how our chicken's doing. About halfway there.
So you could do all this in one saute pan. You could uh, slice up the chicken and put it in the saute pan and add the peppers. I used to do it that way, but I kind of like to be able to um, grab the chicken and grab the peppers and onions separately. So that's why I like to do it separately. So when I take my tortilla and I'm building what I want in there, I can grab a few pieces of chicken and then I can grab the peppers and the onions separately and then build it separately. Um, you could do it all together, but I just like doing it better this way. You can see we're starting to get some color on this. What we're looking for is caramelization. So we want that nice brown color on the onions and the peppers. So caramelization is the sugars in the food uh, caramelizing, turning brown, and that really makes the flavor nice. I'm just gonna kind of spread it out. And get as much of this touching the pan. Start to let to get that, let that get some color. I'll move my uh, raffi pan out of the way. Starting to get some nice color on there. We like in this camera angle. I'll give you just another minute on there just to see that camera angle and then I'll switch back to me. One second. All right, so you can see how that's starting to get some really nice color to it. Nice color. So what I'm going to do now is add some of that topping mix. I'm going to add some salt. And then wherever I put that salsa, I'm going to add half of this salsa just to that. Might just add a splash of water to this to kind of let it cook down. Just a splash. That way, that salsa kind of makes a nice sauce along with those peppers, just like that. And then we're just gonna kind of let that simmer and kind of reduce down a little bit. That looks nice, doesn't it? And we're gonna take that chicken out of the oven. So that chicken is just about cooked. What I'm going to do is 
put the rest of that sauce in there. Doing the chicken this way also helps you cook it perfectly because if you put it in with the peppers and onions, you run the risk of overcooking it. This way, if I cook it separately, I can keep a nice close eye on it. Now I've got that sauce in there, so I'm just going to finish that, put that back in the oven, and let that cook a little bit until it's finished. All right. Those onions are looking nice. That nice, rich, dark red color. So we're gonna kinda let them stew now. All right. So I'm gonna turn that down on low, kinda let that simmer. So now we're almost ready to start plating. Off now. Now for the tortillas. Now you make sure, you want to make sure that you warm up your tortillas because that's what makes them easier to uh, handle and more pliable. You could either uh, put them in the oven for a minute or two, or you can take the stack of them and just put them in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Not even that, maybe five, 10 seconds until they're just warm, and then um, only do that right when you're ready to use them. Take one, fold it off to the side, fold the middle one in half, take the other one and fold it off to the side. So that way, you can build three tortillas at once. That one there, that's right, so just like that. So I've got, I can fill that one here, then I can fill the middle one. And I can fill that last one. So that's three on one plate. First one folded, second one, third one. So I'm just going to put those in the microwave for about 10 seconds for when we're ready to go. Um, I'll warm up the Mexican rice now. So I'm just going to break this apart. Open it up a little bit, just a smidge. about a minute in the microwave. So these peppers and onions are finished. Very nice and stewed just like that. Nice and saucy. So we've got our we've got our guacamole. Pico de gallo. But just so they're warm to the touch. That, I'm going to take the chicken out. Chicken's nice and ready. three tortillas, that one folded, that one folded, so I'm going to start from one end, one or two pieces here, 
bit of the onions. and we can fold that one over and go to the next one into chicken or two a bit of the onion go to the guacamole some of the pico some cheese, fold that one over, and we've got the last one here. Some of the chicken, onion, same, same, same. The key here is not to add too much to each tortilla because then you'll end up having it uh, fall out. And if you want to roll them up, you can. So if you do want to roll it up, we'll just tuck in the side here. So tuck in the side of the tortilla. Fold it in. Fold it over, kind of give it a roll that way. Next one. Tuck in the sides. Pull it in. Tuck in the ends. Last one. Look in the ends. Fold it in. Wrap it up. There. We've got some fajitas. All right. So just like that. That glare is there. So we've got some fajitas there. you all that's watched all the way through. Um, I also did start a YouTube page that I'm doing um, some other cooking demonstrations on. Some properly edited ones that are more to the point that aren't uh, hour long live streams. I'm not sure how long this has gone on. This has gone on an hour. Sorry it took so long. But yeah, so if you want to check out some of those, they're a bit shorter, 10, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, you can go and check out that page. And if that's it, any questions, I'll leave you to it. All right, thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.